Chapter 1 Observing the Armies on the Battlefield of Kurukshetra Text 1 Dhritarashtra Uvacha Dharma Chetre Kuru Chetre Samaveta Yuyutsava Mamaka Pandavashchaiva Kim Akurvata Sanjaya Dhritarashtra King Dhritarashtra Uvacha said Dharma Chetre in the place of pilgrimage Kuru Chetre in the place named Kurushetra Samaveta assembled Yutsava desiring to fight Mamaka my party sons Pandava the sons of Pandu Cha and Eva certainly Kim what Akurvata did they do Sanjaya O Sanjaya Translation Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, after assembling in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do, being desirous to fight? Purport Bhagavad Gita is the widely read theistic science summarized in the Gita Mahatmya, glorification of the Gita. There it says that one should read Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who was a devotee of Sri Krishna, and tried to understand it without personally motivated interpretations. The example of clear understanding is there in the Bhagavad Gita itself, in the way the teaching is understood by Arjuna, who heard the Gita directly from the Lord. If someone is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita in that line of the Suplic succession, without motivated interpretation, then he surpasses all studies of Vedic wisdom and all scriptures of the world. One will find in the Bhagavad Gita all that is contained in other scriptures, but the reader will also find things which are not to be found elsewhere. That is the specific standard of the Gita. It is the perfect theistic science because it is directly spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. The topics discussed by Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya, as described in the Mahabharata, form the basic principle for this great philosophy. It is understood that this philosophy evolved on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, which is a sacred place of pilgrimage from the immemorial time of the Vedic age. It was spoken by the Lord when he was present personally on this planet for the guidance of mankind. The word Dharmachetra, a place where religious rituals are performed, is significant because on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead was present on the side of Arjuna. Dhritarashtra, the father of the Kurus, was highly doubtful about the possibility of his son's ultimate victory. In his doubt, he inquired from his secretary, Sanjaya, What did my sons? and the sons of Pandu do. He was confident that both his sons and the sons of his younger brother Pandu were assembled in that field of Kurukshetra for a determined engagement of the war. Still, his inquiry is significant. He did not want a compromise between the cousins and brothers, and he wanted to be sure of the fate of his sons on the battlefield. Because the battle was arranged to be fought at Kurukshetra, which is mentioned elsewhere in the Vedas as a place of worship even for the denizens of heaven, Dhritarashtra became very fearful about the influence of the holy place on the outcome of the battle. He knew very well that this would influence Arjuna and the sons of Pandu favorably, because by nature they were all virtuous. Sanjaya was a student of Vyas, and therefore, by the mercy of Vyas, Sanjaya was able to envision the battlefield of Kurukshetra, even while he was in the room of Dhritarashtra. And so, Dhritarashtra asked him about the situation on the battlefield. Both the Pandavas and the sons of Dhritarashtra belong to the same family, but Dhritarashtra's mind is disclosed herein. He deliberately claimed only his sons as Kurus, and he separated the sons of Pandu from the family heritage. One can thus understand the specific position of Dhritarashtra in his relationship with his nephews, the sons of Pandu. 
as in the paddy field, the unnecessary plants are taken out. So it is expected from the very beginning of these topics that in the religious field of Kurukshetra, where the father of religion, Sri Krishna, was present, the unwanted plants, like Dhritarashtra's son, Duryodhana, and others, would be wiped out, and the thoroughly religious persons, headed by Yudhishthira, would be established by the Lord. This is the significance of the words Dharmachetra and Kurukshetra, apart from their historical and Vedic importance. Text 2 Sanjaya Uvacha Dristva Tu Pandavani Kam Vyudam Duryodhanastada Acharyam Upasangamya Raja Vachanam Abravit Sanjaya, Sanjaya, Uvacha, said, Dristva, after seeing, Tu, but, Pandava Anikam, the soldiers of the Pandavas, Vyudam, arranged in military phalanx, Duryodhana, King Duryodhana, Tada, at that time, Acharyam, the teacher, Upa Sangamya, approaching nearby, Raja, the king, Vachanam, words, Abravit spoke. Translation Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army gathered by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana went to his teacher and began to speak the following words. Purport Dhritarashtra was blind from birth. Unfortunately, he was also bereft of spiritual vision. He knew very well that his sons were equally blind in the matter of religion, and he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas, who were all pious since birth. Still, he was doubtful about the influence of the place of pilgrimage, and Sanjaya could understand his motive in asking about the situation on the battlefield. He wanted, therefore, to encourage the despondent king, and thus he warned him that his sons were not going to make any sort of compromise under the influence of the holy place. Sanjaya therefore informed the king that his son, Duryodhana, after seeing the military force of the Pandavas, at once went to the commander-in-chief, Dronacharya, to inform him of the real position. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still had to go to the commander on account of the seriousness of the situation. He was therefore quite fit to be a politician. But Duryodhana's diplomatic veneer could not disguise the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the Pandavas. Text 3 Pashaitam Pandu Putranam Acharya Mahatim Chamum Vyutam Drupada Putrena Tava Shishyena Dimata Pasha, behold, Atam, this, Pandu Putranam, of the sons of Pandu, Acharya, O teacher, Mahatim, great, Chamum, military force, Vyutam, arranged, Drupada Putrena, by the son of Drupada, Tava, your, Shishena, disciple, Dimata, very intelligent. Translation O my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupada. Purport Duryodhana, a great diplomat, wanted to point out the defects of Dronacharya, the great Brahmin commander-in-chief. Dronacharya had some political quarrel with King Drupada, the father of Draupadi, who was Arjuna's wife. As a result of this quarrel, Drupada performed a great sacrifice, by which he received the benediction of having a son who would be able to kill Dronacharya. Dronacharya knew this perfectly well, and yet, as a liberal Brahmin, he did not hesitate to impart all his military secrets when the son of Drupada, Drishyadumna, was entrusted to him for military education. <clears throat> now on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Drishyadumna took the side of the Pandavas, and it was he who arranged for their mil military phalanx, after having learned the art from Dronacharya. 
Duryodhana pointed out this mistake of Dronacharya's so that he might be alert and uncompromising in the fighting. By this, he wanted to point out also that he should not be similarly lenient in battle against the Pandavas, who were also Dronacharya's affectionate students. Arjuna especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student. Duryodhana also warned that such leniency in the fight would lead to defeat. Text 4 Atra Shura Mahesh Vasa Bhimarjuna Sama Yudhi Yuyudano Viratascha Drupadash Cha Maharata Atra here Shura heroes Maheshvasa mighty bowman Bhima Arjuna Bhima and Arjuna Sama equal Yudhi in the fight Yudana Yudana Virata Virata Cha also Drupada Drupada Cha also Maharata great fighter Translation here in this army there are many heroic bowmen, equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna. There are also great fighters like Yudhana, Virata, and Drupada. PURPORT Even though Dristyadumna was not a very important obstacle in the face of Dronacharya's very great power in the military art, there are many others who were the cause of fear. They are mentioned by Duryodhana as great stumbling blocks on the path of victory because each and every one of them was as formidable as Bhima and Arjuna. He knew the strength of Bhima and Arjuna, and thus he compared the others with them. Text 5 Drista ke tush chekitana kashi rajash cha viryavan purujit kunti bojash cha shaibyash cha nara pungava Drista Ketu, Drista Ketu, Chekitana, Chekitana, Kashiraj, Kashiraj, Cha, also, Viryavan, very powerful, Purijit, Purijit, Kunti Boja, Kunti Boja, Cha, and, Shaibya, Shaibya, Cha, and, Nara Pungava, heroes in human society. Translation there are also great heroic, powerful fighters like Dristaketu, Chekitana, Kashiraj, Purujit, Kuntiboja, and Shaibya. Text 6 Yud Yamanush Chavi Kranta Utamojas Chavir Yavan Sobadro Dropadeyash Cha Sarva Eva Maharata Yud Yamanu Yud Yamanu Cha and Vikranta, mighty, Utamoja, Utamoja, Cha and Viryavan, very powerful, Subhadra, the son of Subhadra, Dropadea, the sons of Dropadi, Cha and Sarve, all, Eva, certainly, Maharata, great chariot fighters. Translation There are the mighty Yudhyamanyu the very powerful Utamoch, the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. Text 7 Asma kam tu vishishtaye tani boda dvijotama nayaka mama sanyasya samgyartam tan bravimite Asma kam, our, two, but Vishishta, especially powerful, yea, those, tan, them, niboda, just take note, be informed, dvijotama, the best of the Brahmins, nayaka, captains, mama, my, sanyasya, of the soldiers, samgya artam, for information, tan, them, bravimi, I am speaking, te, your, Translation. O best of the Brahmins, for your information, let me tell you about the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force. 
Bhavan Bhishmash Cha Karnash Cha Kripash Cha Samitin Jaya Ashvatama Vikarnash Cha Somadatis Tataiva Cha Bhavan, yourself, Bhishma, grandfather Bhishma, Cha, also, Karna, Karna, Cha, and Kripa, Kripa, Cha, and Samitin Jaya always victorious in battle. Ashvatam, Ashvatam, Vikarna, Vikarna, Cha, as well as, Somadati, the son of Somadatta, Tata, and as, Eva, certainly, Cha, and. Translation. There are personalities like yourself, Bhishma, Karna, Kripa, Ashvatam, Vikarna, and the son of Somadatta, called Burishrava who are always victorious in battle. PURPORT Duryodhana mentioned the exceptional heroes in the battle, all of whom are ever victorious. Vikarna is the brother of Duryodhana, Ashvatam is the son of Dronacharya, and Somadati, or Burishrava, is the son of the king of the Balikas. Karna is the half-brother of Arjuna, as he was born of Kunti before her marriage with King Pandu. Kripacharya married the twin sister of Dronacharya. Text 9 Anye cha bahava shura mad arte tyakta jivita nana shastra praharana sarve yudha visharada Anye, many others, cha, also, bahava, in great numbers, shura, Heroes, Mad Arte, for my sake, Tyakta Jivita, prepared to risk life, Nana, many, Shastra, weapons, Praharana, equipped with, Sarve, all of them, Yudha, battle, Bisharada, experienced in military science. Translation There are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons, and all are experienced in military science. PURPORT As far as the others are concerned, like Jayadrata, Kritavarma, Shalya, etc., all are determined to lay down their lives for Duryodhana's sake. In other words, it is already concluded that all of them would die in the battle of Kurukshetra for joining the party of the sinful Duryodhana. Duryodhana was, of course, confident of his victory on account of the above-mentioned combined strength of his friends. Text 10 Aparyaptam tad asmakam balam bishma birakshitam paryaptam tvi idam etesham balam bima birakshitam Aparyaptam, immeasurable, tat that Asmakam, of ours, Balam, strength, Bhishma, by grandfather Bhishma, Abhirakshitam, perfectly protected, Paryaptam, limited, to, but, Idam, all these, Etesham, of the Pandavas, Balam, strength, Bhima, by Bhima, Abhirakshitam, carefully protected. Translation our strength is immeasurable, and we are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma, whereas the strength of the Pandavas, carefully protected by Bhima, is limited. PURPORT Herein an estimation of comparative strength is made by Duryodhana. He thinks that the strength of his armed forces is immeasurable, being specifically protected by the most experienced general, Grandfather Bhishma. On the other hand, the forces of the Pandavas are limited, being protected by a less experienced general, Bhima, who is like a fig in the presence of Bhishma. Duryodhana was always envious of Bhima because he knew perfectly well that if he should die at all, he would only be killed by Bhima. But at the same time, he was confident of his victory on account of the presence of Bhishma, who was a far superior general. His conclusion that he would come out of the battle victorious was well ascertained. Text 11 
Ayaneshu cha sarveshu yata bhagam avashtita bishmam eva birakshantu bhavanta sarva eva hi. Ayaneshu in the strategic points. Cha also sarveshu everywhere yata bhagam as they are differently arranged. Avashtita situated. Bishmam unto grandfather Bishma. Eva, certainly. Abhirakshan, too. Support may be given. Bhavanta, all of you. Sarve, respectively. Eva, certainly. He, and exactly. Translation. Now all of you must give full support to Grandfather Bhishma, standing at your respective strategic points in the phalanx of the army. Purport. Duryodhana, after praising the prowess of Bhishma, further considered that others might think that they had been considered less important. So in his usual diplomatic way, he tried to adjust the situation in the above words. He emphasized that Bhishma Dev was undoubtedly the greatest hero, but he was an old man, so everyone must especially think of his protection from all sides. He might become engaged in the fight, and the enemy might take advantage of his full engagement on one side. Therefore, it was important that other heroes would not leave their strategic positions and allow the enemy to break the phalanx. Duryodhana clearly felt that the victory of the Kurus depended on the presence of Bhishmadev. He was confident of the full support of Bhishmadev and Dronacharya in the battle because he well knew that they did not even speak a word when Arjuna's wife Draupadi, in her helpless condition, had appealed to them for justice while she was being forced to strip naked in the presence of all the great generals in the assembly. Although he knew that the two generals had some sort of affection for the Pandavas, he hoped that all such affection would now be completely given up by them, as was customary during the gambling performances. Text 12. Tasya Sanjanayan Harsham Kuru Vridha Pitamaha Singha Nadam Vinad Yochai Shankam Dadmo Pratapavan Tasya, his Sanjanayan, increasing Harsham, cheerfulness Kuru Vridha, the grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, Bhishma. Pitamaha, the grandfather, Shingha Nadam, roaring sound like a lion, Vinadya, vibrating, Uchai, very loudly, Shankam, Kanshel, Dadmo, blue, Pratapavan, the valiant. Translation Then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly, like the sound of a lion, giving Duryodhana joy. PURPORT The grandsire of the Kuru dynasty could understand the inner meaning of the heart of his grandson Duryodhana, and out of his natural compassion for him, he tried to cheer him by blowing his conch shell very loudly, befitting his position as a lion. Indirectly, by the symbolism of the conch shell, he informed his depressed grandson Duryodhana that he had no chance of victory in the battle, because the Supreme Lord Krishna was on the other side. But still, it was his duty to conduct the fight, and no pains would be spared in that connection. Text 13 Tata shankash cha beryash cha panavanaka gomuka Sahasa vabhya yayanta sa shabdas tumalo bhavat Tata, thereafter, Shanka, conchels, Cha, also, Berya, bugles, Cha, and Panava anaka, trumpets and drums, Gomuka, horns, Sahasa, all of a sudden, Eva, certainly, Abhyahanyanta, being simultaneously sounded, 
sa, that, shabda, combined sound, tumala, tumultuous, abavat, became. Translation. After that, the conch shells, bugles, trumpets, drums, and horns were all suddenly sounded, and the combined sound was tumultuous. Text 14. Tata Shvetar Hayar Yukte Mahati Syandane Stito Madhava Pandavash Chaiva Divyo Shanko Pradadmatu Tata thereafter Shvetai by white Hayai horses Yukte being yoked with Mahati in the great Syandane chariot Stito, so situated. Madhava, Krishna, the husband of the goddess of fortune. Pandava, Arjuna, the son of Pandu. Cha, also. Eva, certainly. Divyo, transcendental. Shanko, conch shells. Pradadmatu, sounded. Translation. On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna, stationed on a great chariot, drawn by white horses, sounded their transcendental conch shells. PURPORT In contrast with the conch shell blown by Bhishmadev, the conch shells in the hands of Krishna and Arjuna are described as transcendental. The sounding of the transcendental conch shells indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side, because Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. Jayas tu Pandu Putranam Yesham Pakshe Janardana. Victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu, because Lord Krishna is associated with them. And whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the goddess of fortune is also there, because the goddess of fortune never lives alone without her husband. Therefore, victory and fortune were awaiting Arjuna, as indicated by the transcendental sound produced by the conch shell of Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Besides that, the chariot on which both the friends were seated was donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna, and this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. Text 15 Pancha Janyam Rishi Kesho Deva datam dananjaya, pondram dadmo maha shankam, bhima karma vrikodara. Panchajanyam, the conch shell named Panchajanya, Rishikesha, Rishikesh, Krishna, the Lord who directs the senses of the devotees. Devadatam, the conch shell named Devadatta, dananjaya. Dhananjaya, Arjuna, the winner of wealth. Pondram, the conch named Pondram. Dadmo, blue. Maha Shankam, the terrific conch shell. Bhima Karma, one who performs Herculean tasks. Vrikodara, the voracious eater. Bhima. Translation. Then, Lord Krishna blew his conch shell, called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pondram. PURPORT Lord Krishna is referred to as Rishikesh in this verse because he is the owner of all senses. The living entities are part and parcel of him, and therefore the senses of the living entities are also part and parcel of his senses. The impersonalist cannot account for the senses of the living entities, and therefore they are always anxious to describe all living entities as senseless or impersonal. The Lord situated in the hearts of all living entities directs their senses, but he directs in terms of the surrender of the living entity, and in the case of a pure devotee, he directly controls the senses. Here, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Lord directly controls the transcendental senses of Arjuna, 
and thus his particular name of Rishikesh. The Lord has different names according to his different activities. For example, his name is Madhusudana, because he killed the demon of the name Madhu. His name is Govinda, because he gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses. His name is Vasudev, because he appeared as the son of Vasudev. His name is Devaki Nandana, because he accepted Devaki as his mother. His name is Yashoda Nandana, because he awarded his childhood pastimes to Yashoda at Vrindavan. His name is Partha Sarati, because he worked as charioteer of his friend Arjuna. Similarly, his name is Rishikesh, because he gave direction to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Arjuna is referred to as Dhananjaya in this verse because he helped his elder brother in fetching wealth when it was required by the king to make expenditures for different sacrifices. Similarly, Bhima is known as Vrikodra because he could eat as voraciously as he could perform Herculean tasks such as killing the demon Hidimba. So the particular types of conch shell blown by the different personalities on the side of the Pandavas, beginning with the lords, were all very encouraging to the fighting soldiers. On the other side, there were no such credits, nor the presence of Lord Krishna, the supreme director, nor that of the goddess of fortune. So they were predestined to lose the battle, and that was the message announced by the sounds of the conch shells. Text 16 to 18. Ananta vijayam raja, kunti putro yudhishthira, nakula saha devascha, sukosh mani pushpako, kashyascha parameshvasa, shikandi cha maharata, drishya jumno viratascha, Satyakish Chaparajita Drupado Dropadeyash Cha Sarvasha Prithivi Pate Sobhadrash Cha Mahabahu Shankan Dadmu Pritak Pritak Ananta Vijayam The Kanch named Ananta Vijaya Raja the King Kunti Putra the son of Kunti Yudhishthira Yudhishthir, Nakula, Nakula, Sahadeva, Sahadev, Cha, and Sukosh Manipushpako, the conches named Sukosh and Manipushpaka, Kasha, the king of Kashi, Varanasi, Cha, and Parmeshvasa, the great archer, Shikandi, Shikandi, Cha, also, Maharata, one who can fight alone against thousands. Drishya Jumna, Drishya Jumna, the son of King Drupada. Virata, Virata, the prince who gave shelter to the Pandavas while they were in disguise. Cha, also. Satyaki, Satyaki, the same as Yuyudna, the charioteer of Lord Krishna. Cha, and Aparajita, who were never vanquished before. Drupada, Drupada, the king of Panchala. Dropadeya, the sons of Dropadi. Cha, also. Sarvasha, all. Prithivi Pate, O king. Subhadra, the son of Subhadra, Abhimanyu. Cha, also. Mahabahu, greatly armed. Shankan, conchels. Dadmu, blue, pritak pritak, each separately. Translation King Yudhishthir, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Anantavi Jaya, and Nakula and Sahadev blew the Sagosh and Manipushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kashi, the great fighter, Shikandi, Drishyadumna, Virata, and the unconquerable Satyaki, Drupada, the sons of Draupadi, and the others, O king, such as the son of Subhadra, greatly armed, all blew their respective conch shells. PURPORT 
Sanjaya informed King Dhritarashtra very tactfully that his unwise policy of deceiving the sons of Pandu and endeavoring to enthrone his own sons on the seat of the kingdom was not very laudable. The signs already clearly indicated that the whole Kuru dynasty would be killed in that great battle. Beginning with the grandsire, Bhishma down to the grandsons like Abhimanyu and others, including kings from many states of the world, all were present there, and all were doomed. The whole catastrophe was due to King Dhritarashtra, because he encouraged the policy followed by his sons. Text 19 Sagosho Dhritarashtranam Hridayani Vyadarayat Nabash cha pritivim chaiva tumalo bianu nadayan sa that gosha vibration dartarastranam of the sons of dritarastra fridayani hearts via dariat shattered naba the sky cha also pritivim the surface of the earth cha also eva Certainly, Tumala, uproarious, Abhyanu Nadayan, by resounding. Translation The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, and thus vibrating both in the sky and on the earth, it shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. Purport When Bhishma and the others on the side of Duryodhana blew their respective conch shells, there was no heartbreaking on the part of the Pandavas. Such occurrences are not mentioned, but in this particular verse it is mentioned that the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra were shattered by the sounds vibrated by the Pandavas' party. This is due to the Pandavas and their confidence in Lord Krishna. One who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. Text 20. Ata via vashti tandristva, dartarastran kapi dvaja, pravrite shastra sampate, danur udyamya pandava, rishikesham tada vakyam, idam aha mahipate. Ata thereupon, via vashti situated, dristva looking on, Dhartarastran, the sons of Dhritarashtra, Kapi Dvaja, one whose flag is marked with Hanuman, Pravrite, while about to be engaged, Shastra Sampate, the arrows released, Danu, bow, Udyamya, after taking up, Pandava, the son of Pandu, Arjuna, Rishikesham, unto Lord Krishna, Tada, at that time, Vakim, words, idam, these, aha, said, mahipate, O king. Translation O king, at that time Arjuna, the son of Pandu, who was seated in his chariot, his flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. Looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra, O king, Arjuna then spoke to Rishikesh, Krishna, these words. Purport. The battle was just about to begin. It is understood from the above statement that the sons of Dhritarashtra were more or less disheartened by the unexpected arrangement of military force by the Pandavas, who were guided by the direct instructions of Lord Krishna on the battlefield. The emblem of Hanuman on the flag of Arjuna is another sign of victory, because Hanuman cooperated with Lord Ram in the battle between Ram and Ravana and Lord Ram emerged victorious. Now both Ram and Hanuman were present on the chariot of Arjuna to help him. Lord Krishna is Ram himself, and wherever Lord Ram is, his eternal servitor, Hanuman, and his eternal consort, Sita, the goddess of fortune, are present. Therefore, Arjuna had no cause to fear any enemies whatsoever. And above all, the Lord of the senses, Lord Krishna, was personally present to give him direction. 
Thus all good counsel was available to Arjuna in the matter of executing the battle. In such auspicious conditions, arranged by the Lord for his eternal devotee, lay the signs of assured victory. Text 21-22 to 22. Arjuna uvacha senayor ubayor madye ratam stapaya me chuta yavad etan nirikshe hum yodhu kaman avashditan kair maya saha yodavyam asmin rana samudyame Arjuna, Arjuna, Uvacha said, Senayo, of the armies, Ubayo, of both the parties, Madye, in between them, Ratam, the chariot, Stapaya, please keep, Me, my, Achuta, O infallible one, Yavat, as long as, Etan, all these, Nirikshe, may look, Aham, I, Yodhu, Kaman, desiring to fight, Avashtitan, arrayed on the battlefield, Kai, with whom, Maya, by me, Saha, with, Yodavyam, to fight with, Asman, in this, Rana, strife, Samudyame, in the attempt. Translation Arjuna said, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies, so that I may see who is present here who is desirous of fighting, and with whom I must contend in this great battle attempt. PURPORT Although Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy he was engaged in the service of his friend. He never fails in his affection for his devotees, and thus he is addressed herein as infallible. As charioteer he had to carry out the orders of Arjuna, and since he did not hesitate to do so, he is addressed as infallible. Although he had accepted the position of a charioteer for his devotee, his supreme position was not challenged. In all circumstances, he is the supreme personality of Godhead, Rishikesh, the lord of the total senses. The relationship between the lord and his servitor is very sweet and transcendental. The servitor is always ready to render a service to the Lord, and similarly the Lord is always seeking an opportunity to render some service to the devotee. He takes greater pleasure in his pure devotee's assuming the advantageous position of ordering him than he does in being the giver of orders. As master, everyone is under his orders, and no one is above him to order him. But when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him, he obtains transcendental pleasure, although he is the infallible master of all circumstances. As a pure devotee of the Lord, Arjuna had no desire to fight with his cousins and brothers, but he was forced to come onto the battlefield by the obstinacy of Duryodhana, who was never agreeable to any peaceful negotiation. Therefore, he was very anxious to see who the leading persons present on the battlefield were. Although there was no question of a peacemaking endeavor on the battlefield, he wanted to see them again, and to see how much they were bent upon demanding an unwanted war. Text 23 Yotsyamanam avekshaham ya ete tra samagata Dartarastrasya durbuter yudhe priya chichikshava. Yotsyamanan, those who will be fighting, avekshe, let me see, aham, I, yea, who, ete, those, atra, here, samagata, assembled, Dartarastrasya, the son of Dhritarashtra, durbude, evil minded, Yudhe, in the fight, Priya, well, Chichirkshava, wishing. Translation Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil-minded son of Dhritarashtra. Purport It was an open secret 
that Duryodhana wanted to usurp the kingdom of the Pandavas by evil plans, in collaboration with his father Dhritarashtra. Therefore all persons who had joined the side of Duryodhana must have been birds of the same feather. Arjuna wanted to see them in the battlefield before the fight was begun, just to learn who they were, but he had no intention of proposing peace negotiations with them. It was also a fact that he wanted to see them to make an estimate of the strength which he had to face, although he was quite confident of victory because Krishna was sitting by his side. Text 24 Sanjaya uvacha evam ukto rishi kesho gude keshana bharata senayor ubayor madye stapa yitva rato tamam Sanjaya, Sanjaya, uvacha said evam thus ukta addressed rishi kesha Lord Krishna gude keshana by Arjuna Bharata, O descendant of Bharat, Senayo, of armies, Ubayo, of both, Madye, in the midst of, Stapayitva, by placing, Ratotamam, the finest chariot. Translation Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharat, being thus addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. Purport. In this verse, Arjuna is referred to as Gudakesh. Gudaka means sleep, and one who conquers sleep is called Gudakesh. Sleep also means ignorance. So Arjuna conquered both sleep and ignorance because of his friendship with Krishna. As a great devotee of Krishna, he could not forget Krishna even for a moment, because that is the nature of a devotee. Either in waking or in sleep, a devotee of the Lord can never be free from thinking of Krishna's name, form, quality, and pastimes. Thus, a devotee of Krishna can conquer both sleep and ignorance simply by thinking of Krishna constantly. This is called Krishna consciousness, or samadhi. As Rishikesh, or the director of the senses and mind of every living entity, Krishna could understand Arjuna's purpose in placing the chariot in the midst of the armies. Thus he did so, and spoke as follows. Text 25 Bhishma drona pramukkata sarvesham cha mahikshitam uvacha parta pashaitan samavetan karun iti Bhishma, grandfather Bhishma, drona, the teacher drona, pramukkata, in the front of, sarvesham, all, cha, also, mahikshitam, chiefs of the world, uvacha, said, parta, o parta, son of prita, pasha, just behold, etan, all of them, samavetan, assembled, kurun, all the members of the kuru dynasty, eti, thus. Translation in the presence of Bhishma, Drona, and all other chieftains of the world, Rishikesh, the Lord said, Just behold, Parta, all the Kurus who are assembled here. PURPORT As the super-soul of all living entities, Lord Krishna can understand what was going on in the mind of Arjuna. The use of the word Rishikesh in this connection indicates that he knew everything. And the word Parta, or the son of Kunti or Prita, is also similarly significant in reference to Arjuna. As a friend, he wanted to inform Arjuna that because Arjuna was the son of Prita, the sister of his own father Vasudev, he had agreed to be the charioteer of Arjuna. Now what did Krishna mean when he told Arjuna to behold the Kurus? Did Arjuna want to stop there and not fight? Krishna never expected such things from the son of his aunt Prita. The mind of Arjuna was thus predicated by the Lord in friendly joking. Text 26 Tatra Pashyat Stitan Parta Pitrin Atta Pitamahan Acharyan Matulan Bratrin 
putran potran sakim stata shvashuran suridash jaiva sanayor ubayor api tatra there apashat he could see stitan standing parta arjuna patron fathers ata also pitamahan grandfathers acharyan teachers matulan maternal uncles bratran brothers putran sons potran grandsons sakin friends tata two shvashiran fathers-in-law suhrida well-wishers cha also eva certainly sanayo of the armies ubayo of both parties api including translation there arjuna could see within the midst of the armies of both parties his fathers grandfathers teachers maternal uncles brothers sons grandsons friends and also his father-in-law and well-wishers all present there purport on the battlefield arjuna could see all kinds of relatives he could see persons like burishrava who were his father's contemporaries grandfathers bhishma and somadatta teachers like dronacharya and kripacharya maternal uncles like shalya and shakuni brothers like duryodhana sons like lakshman friends like ashvatam well-wishers like kritavarma etc he could see also the armies which contained many of his friends text 27 Tan samiksha sa kontea sarvan bandhun avashditan kripaya para ya vishto vishidan idam abravit tan all of them samiksha after seeing sa he kontea the son of kunti sarvan all kinds of bandhun relatives avashditan situated kripaya by compassion, paraya, of a high grade, avishta, overwhelmed by, vishidan, while lamenting, idam, thus, apravit, spoke. Translation When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. Text 28 Arjuna uvacha drisvemam svajanam krishna yuyutsum samupashtitam siddhanti mama gatrani mukam cha parishushati Arjuna, Arjuna, uvacha said drisva after seeing imam all these svajanam kinsmen krishna o krishna Yuyutsam, all in fighting spirit. Samu Pashtitam, all present. Siddhanti, quivering. Mama, my. Gatrani, limbs of the body. Mukam, mouth. Cha, also. Parishushati, drying up. Translation Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up. PURPORT Any man who has genuine devotion to the Lord has all the good qualities which are found in godly persons or in the demigods, whereas the non-devotee, however advanced he may be in material qualifications by education and culture, lacks in godly qualities. As such, Arjuna, just after seeing his kinsmen, friends, and relatives on the battlefield, was at once overwhelmed by compassion for them, who had so decided to fight amongst themselves. As far as his soldiers were concerned, he was sympathetic from the beginning, but he felt compassion even for the soldiers of the opposite party, foreseeing their imminent death. And so thinking, the limbs of his body began to quiver, and his mouth became dry. He was more or less astonished to see their fighting spirit. 
Practically the whole community, all blood relatives of Arjuna, had come to fight with him. This overwhelmed a kind devotee like Arjuna. Although it is not mentioned here, still one can easily imagine that not only were Arjuna's bodily limbs quivering and his mouth drying up, but that he was also crying out of compassion. Such symptoms in Arjuna were not due to weakness, but to his soft-heartedness, a characteristic of a pure devotee of the Lord. It is said, therefore, Yas yasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchana sarvar gunais tatra samaste sura harav a bhaktasya kuto mahatguna mano rate nasati davato bahi. One who has unflinching devotion for the personality of Godhead has all the good qualities of the demigods. But one who is not a devotee of the Lord has only material qualifications that are of little value. This is because he is hovering on the mental plane and is certain to be attracted by the glaring material energy. Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 18, Verse 12 Text 29 Ve patush cha sharire me, Roma harshash cha jayate, Gandivam shramsate hastat, Tvak chaiva paridayate. Ve patu, trembling of the body, Cha, also, sharire, on the body, Me, my, Roma harsha, standing of hair on end, Cha, also, jayate, is taking place. Gandivam, the bow of Arjuna. Sramsate is slipping. Hastat, from the hands. Tvak, skin. Cha, also. Eva, certainly. Paridayate, burning. Translation. My whole body is trembling, and my hair is standing on end. My bow, Gandiva, is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. PURPORT There are two kinds of trembling of the body, and two kinds of standings of the hair on end. Such phenomena occur either in great spiritual ecstasy, or out of great fear under material conditions. There is no fear in transcendental realization. Arjuna's symptoms in this situation are out of material fear, namely loss of life. This is evident from other symptoms also. He became so impatient that his famous bow Gandiva was slipping from his hands, and because his heart was burning within him, he was feeling a burning sensation of the skin. All these are due to a material conception of life. Text 30 Na cha shaknomi avashtatum brahma tiva cha me mana Nimitani cha pashami, viparitani keshava. Na, nor, cha, also. Shaknomi, am I able? Avashtatum, to stay. Brahmati, forgetting. Eva, as. Cha, end. Me, my. Mana, mind. Nimitani, causes. Cha, also. Pashami, I foresee. Viparitani, just the opposite. Keshava, O killer of the demon Keshi, Krishna. Translation I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself, and my mind is reeling. I foresee only evil, O killer of the Keshi demon. Purport Due to his impatience, Arjuna was unable to stay on the battlefield, and he was forgetting himself on account of the weakness of his mind. Excessive attachment for material things puts a man in a bewildering condition of existence. Bayam vitiya bini veshata. Such fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium take place in persons who are too affected by material conditions. Arjuna envisioned only unhappiness in the battlefield. He would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foe. The word nimita is significant. 
when a man sees only frustration in his expectations, he thinks, why am I here? Everyone is interested in himself and his own welfare. No one is interested in the Supreme Self. Arjuna is supposed to show disregard for self-interest by submission to the will of Krishna, who is everyone's real self-interest. The conditioned soul forgets this and therefore suffers material pains. Arjuna thought that his victory in the battle would only be a cause of lamentation for him. Text 31 Na cha shreyo nu pashami hat vas vajanam ahave na kankshe vijayam krishna na cha rajam sukhani cha na nor cha also shreya good anu pashami do i foresee hatva by killing svajanam own kinsman ahave in the fight Na, nur, kankshe, do I desire, vijayam, victory, krishna, o krishna, na, nur, cha, also, rajam, kingdom, sukhani, happiness thereof, cha, also. Translation I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle. Nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom, or happiness. PURPORT Without knowing that one's self-interest is in Vishnu or Krishna, conditioned souls are attracted by bodily relationships, hoping to be happy in such situations. Under delusion, they forget that Krishna is also the cause of material happiness. Arjuna appears to have even forgotten the moral codes for a chatriya. It is said that two kinds of men, namely the chatriya who dies directly in front of the battlefield under Krishna's personal orders, and the person in the renounced order of life who is absolutely devoted to spiritual culture, are eligible to enter into the sun globe, which is so powerful and dazzling. Arjuna is reluctant even to kill his enemies, let alone his relatives. He thought that by killing his kinsmen there would be no happiness in his life, and therefore he was not willing to fight, just as the person who does not feel hunger is not inclined to cook. He has now decided to go into the forest and live a secluded life in frustration. But as a chatriya, he requires a kingdom for his subsistence, because the Chatriyas cannot engage themselves in any other occupation. But Arjuna has had no kingdom. Arjuna's sole opportunity for gaining a kingdom lay in fighting with his cousins and brothers and reclaiming the kingdom inherited from his father, which he does not like to do. Therefore, he considers himself fit to go to the forest to live a secluded life of frustration. Text 32 to 35 Kim no Rajena Govinda Kim Bogar Jivitena Va Yesham Arte Kankshitam no Rajam Boga Sukhani Cha Ta Ime Vashtita Yude Pranam styaktva danani cha, acharya pitara putras, tataiva cha pitamaha, matula shvashura potra, shala sambandinas tata, etan nahantum ichami, gnato pi madusudana, api trilokya rajyasya, Heto kim nu mahi krite, ni hatya dartarastrana, ka priti syaj janardana. Kim, what use? Na, to us, Rajena, is the kingdom. Govinda, O Krishna, Kim, what? Bogai, enjoyment. 
jivitena, by living, va, either, yeshum, for whom, arte, for the matter of, kangshitam, desired, na, our, rajam, kingdom, boga, material enjoyment, sukani, all happiness, cha, also, te, all of them, ime, these, avashtita, situated, yute, in this battlefield, pranan, lives, tyaktva, giving up, danani, riches, cha, also, acharya, teachers, pitara, fathers, putra, sons, tata, as well as, eva, certainly, cha, also, pitamaha, grandfathers, matula, maternal uncles, shvashura, fathers-in-law, potra, grandsons, shala, brothers-in-law, sambandina, relatives, tata, as well as, etan, all these, na, never, hantum, for killing, ichami, do I wish, gnata, being killed, api, even, madasudana, o killer of the demon madu, krishna, api, even if, trilokya, of the three worlds, rajyasya, of the kingdoms, heto, in exchange, kim, what to speak of, nu, only, mahikrite, for the sake of earth, nihatya, by killing, dartarastran, the sons of dritarastra, na, our, ka, what, priti, pleasure, siat, will there be, janardana, O maintainer of all living entities. Translation O Govinda, of what avail to us our kingdoms, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed in this battlefield? O Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and all relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties, and are standing before me, then why should I wish to kill them, though I may survive? O maintainer of all creatures, I am not prepared to fight with them, even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. PURPORT Arjuna has addressed Lord Krishna as Govinda, because Krishna is the object of all pleasures for cows and the senses. By using this significant word, Arjuna indicates what will satisfy his senses. Although Govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses, if we try to satisfy the senses of Govinda, then automatically our own senses are satisfied. Materially, everyone wants to satisfy his senses, and he wants God to be the order supplier for such satisfaction. The Lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they deserve, but not to the extent that they may covet. But when one takes the opposite way, namely, when one tries to satisfy the senses of Govinda without desiring to satisfy one's own senses, then by the grace of Govinda all desires of the living entity are satisfied. Arjuna's deep affection for community and family members is exhibited here partly due to his natural compassion for them. He is therefore not prepared to fight. Everyone wants to show his opulence to friends and relatives, but Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed in the battlefield, and he will be unable to share his opulence after victory. This is a typical calculation of material life. The transcendental life is, however, different. Since a devotee wants to satisfy the desires of the Lord, he can, Lord willing, accept all kinds of opulence for the service of the Lord. And if the Lord is not willing, he should not accept the farthing. Arjuna did not want to kill his relatives, and even if there were any need to kill them, he desired that Krishna kill them personally. 
At this point he did not know that Krishna had already killed them before their coming into the battlefield, and that he was only to become an instrument for Krishna. This fact is disclosed in following chapters. As a natural devotee of the Lord, Arjuna did not like to retaliate against his miscreant cousins and brothers, but it was the Lord's plan that they should all be killed. The devotee of the Lord does not retaliate against the wrongdoer, but the Lord does not tolerate any mischief done to the devotee by the miscreants. The Lord can excuse a person on his own account, but he excuses no one who has done harm to his devotees. Therefore the Lord was determined to kill the miscreants, although Arjuna wanted to excuse them. Text 36 Papam eva shrayet asman hatvaitan atatayina tasman narha vayam hantum dartarastran svabandavan svajanam hi katam hatva sukhina syama madava Papam, vices, eva, certainly, ashrayet, must take upon, asman, us, Hatva by killing, etan all these, atatayina aggressors, tasmat therefore, na never, arha deserving, vayam us hantum to kill, dartarastran the sons of Dhritarashtra, svabandavan along with friends, svajanam kinsmen, he certainly, katam how. Hatva by killing, Sukhina, happy, Syama, become, Madhava, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune. Translation Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? And how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? The purport. According to Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. Number one, a poison giver. Two, one who sets fire to the house. Three, one who attacks with deadly weapons. Four, one who plunders riches. Five, one who occupies another's land. And six, one who kidnaps a wife. Such aggressors are at once to be killed, and no sin is incurred by killing such aggressors. Such killing of aggressors is quite befitting for any ordinary man, but Arjuna was not an ordinary person. He was saintly by character, and therefore he wanted to deal with them in saintliness. This kind of saintliness, however, is not for a chatra. Although a responsible man in the administration of a state is required to be saintly, he should not be cowardly. For example, Lord Ram was so saintly that people were anxious to live in his kingdom, Ram Raja, but Lord Ram never showed any cowardice. Ravana was an aggressor against Ram because he kidnapped Ram's wife, Sita, but Lord Ram gave him sufficient lessons, unparalleled in the history of the world. In Arjuna's case, however, one should consider the special type of aggressors, namely his own grandfather, own teacher, friends, sons, grandsons, etc. Because of them, Arjuna thought that he should not take the severe steps necessary against ordinary aggressors. Besides that, saintly persons are advised to forgive. Such injunctions for saintly persons are more important than any political emergency. Arjuna considered that rather than kill his own kinsmen for political reasons, it would be better to forgive them on grounds of religion and saintly behavior. He did not therefore consider such killing profitable simply for the matter of temporary bodily happiness. After all, kingdoms and pleasures derived therefrom are not permanent. So why should he risk his life and eternal salvation by killing his own kinsmen? Arjuna's addressing of Krishna as Madhava 
or the husband of the goddess of fortune, is also significant in this connection. He wanted to point out to Krishna that, as husband of the goddess of fortune, he should not have to induce Arjuna to take up a matter which would ultimately bring about misfortune. Krishna, however, never brings misfortune to anyone, to say nothing of his devotees. Text 37 to 38 Yadyapi ete na pashanti lobo pahata chedasa kulakshaya kritam dosham mitra drohe cha patakam katam na geyam asma bi papad asman nivartitum kulashaya kritam dosham prapashyad bir janardana yadi if, a p, certainly, a t, they, na, do not, pashanti, si, loba, greed, upahata, overpowered, chedasa, the hearts, kulashaya, in killing the family, kritam, done, dosham, fault, mitra drohe, quarreling with friends, cha, also, patakam, sinful reactions. Katam, why? Na, shall not. Geyam, know this. Asmabi, by us. Papat, from sins. Asmat, ourselves. Nivartitum, to cease. Kula Shaya, the destruction of a dynasty. Pritam, by so doing. Dosham, crime. Prapashad be, by those who can see. Janardna, O Krishna. Translation O Janardan, although these men, overtaken by greed, see no fault in killing one's family or quarreling with friends, why should we, with knowledge of sin, engage in these acts? Purport A Chatriya is not supposed to refuse to battle or gamble when he is so invited by some rival party. Under such obligation, Arjuna could not refuse to fight because he was challenged by the party of Duryodhana. In this connection, Arjuna considered that the other party might be blind to the effects of such a challenge. Arjuna, however, could see the evil consequences and could not accept the challenge. Obligation is actually binding when the effect is good, but when the effect is otherwise, then no one can be bound. Considering all these pros and cons, Arjuna decided not to fight. Text 39 Kula shaye pranashanti Kula dharma sanatana Dharma nashte kulam kritsnam Adharmo bibhavati uta Kula shaye, in destroying the family, pranashanti becomes vanquished. Kula Dharma, the family traditions. Sanatana, eternal. Dharma, in religion. Nashde, being destroyed. Kulam, family. Kritsnam, wholesale. Adharma, irreligious. Abhibhavati, transforms. Uta, it is said. Translation With the destruction of dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligious practice. PURPORT In this system of the Varnashram institution, there are many principles of religious traditions to help members of the family grow properly and attain spiritual values. The elder members are responsible for such purifying processes in the family, beginning from birth to death. But on the death of the elder members, such family traditions of purification may stop, and the remaining younger family members may develop irreligious habits, and thereby lose their chance for spiritual salvation. Therefore, for no purpose should the elder members of the family be slain. Text 30 Adharma Bhavat Krishna Pradushanti kula striya 
Strishu Dushdasu Varshneya Jayate Varna Sankara A Dharma, a religion, Abhi Bhavat, having been predominant, Krishna, O Krishna, Pradushanti, become polluted, Kula Striya, family ladies, Strishu, of the womanhood, Dushdasu, being so polluted, Varshneya, O descendant of Vrishni, Jayate, it so becomes, Varna Sankara, unwanted progeny. Translation When irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become corrupt, and from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Vrishni, comes unwanted progeny. Purport Good population in human society is the basic principle for peace, prosperity, and spiritual progress in life. The Varnashram religion's principles were so designed that the good population would prevail in society for the general spiritual progress of state and community. Such population depends on the chastity and faithfulness of its womanhood. As children are very prone to be misled, women are similarly very prone to degradation. Therefore, both children and women require protection by the elder members of the family. By being engaged in various religious practices, women will not be misled into adultery. According to Chanakya Pandit, women are generally not very intelligent, and therefore not trustworthy. So the different family traditions of religious activities should always engage them, and thus their chastity and devotion will give birth to a good population eligible for participating in the Varnashram system. On the failure of such Varnashram Dharma, naturally the women become free to act and mix with men, and thus adultery is indulged in at the risk of unwanted population. Irresponsible men also provoke adultery in society, and thus unwanted children flood the human race at the risk of war and pestilence. Text 41 Sankaro Narakayaiva Kulak Nanam Kulasya Cha Patanti Pitaro Hi Esham Lupta Pindodaka Kriya Sankara, such unwanted children. Narakaya, for hellish life. Eva, certainly. Kula, Gnanam, of those who are killers of the family. Kulasya, of the family. Cha, also. Patanti, fall down. Pitara, forefathers. He, certainly. Asham, of them. Lupta, stopped. Pinda, offerings. Udaka, Water, Kriya, Performance. Translation When there is increase of unwanted population, a hellish situation is created both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. In such corrupt families, there is no offering of oblations of food and water to the ancestors. Purport According to the rules and regulations of fruitive activities, there is a need to offer periodical food and water to the forefathers of the family. This offering is performed by worship of Vishnu, because eating the remnants of food offered to Vishnu can deliver one from all kinds of sinful actions. Sometimes the forefathers may be suffering from various types of sinful reactions, and sometimes some of them cannot even acquire a gross material body and are forced to remain in subtle bodies as ghosts. Thus, when remnants of prasadam food are offered to forefathers by descendants, the forefathers are released from ghostly or other kinds of miserable life. Such help rendered to forefathers is a family tradition, and those who are not in devotional life are required to perform such rituals. One who is engaged in the devotional life is not required to perform such actions. Simply by performing devotional service, one can deliver 
hundreds and thousands of forefathers from all kinds of misery. It is stated in the Bhagavatam, Devarshi Bhutapta Nirnam Pitranam Na Kinkuro Nayamrini Cha Rajan Sarvatmana Ya Sharnam Sharanyam Gato Mukundam Parihritya Kartam Anyone who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, the giver of liberation, giving up all kinds of obligation, and has taken to the path in all seriousness, owes neither duties nor obligations to the demigods, sages, general living entities, family members, humankind, or forefathers. Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th Canto, 5th Chapter, Verse 41 Such obligations are automatically fulfilled by performance of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 42 Doshar etai kulagnanam varna sankara karakai utsadyante jati dharma kula dharmash cha shashvata Doshai, by such faults, etai, all these, kulagnanam, of the destroyer of a family, varna sankara, unwanted children, karakai, by the doers, utsadyante, causes devastation, jati dharma, community project, kula dharma, family tradition, cha, also, shashvata, eternal. Translation Due to the evil deeds of the destroyers of family tradition, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. Purport the four orders of human society combined with family welfare activities, as they are set forth by the institution of the Sanatan Dharma or Varnashram Dharma, are designed to enable the human being to attain his ultimate salvation. Therefore, the breaking of the Sanatan Dharma tradition by irresponsible leaders of society brings about chaos in that society, and consequently, people forget the aim of life. Vishnu. Such leaders are called blind, and persons who follow such leaders are sure to be led into chaos. Text 43 Utsana kula dharmanam manushyanam janardana narake niyatam vaso bhavatiti anushrushruma Utsana, spoiled, kula dharmanam of those who have the family traditions, Manushanam, of such men, Janardana, O Krishna, Narake, in hell, Niyatam, always, Vasa, resonance, Bhavati, it so becomes, Iti, thus, Anushushruma, I have heard by disciplic succession. Translation O Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard, by disciplic succession, that those who destroy family traditions dwell always in hell. PURPORT Arjuna bases his argument not on his own personal experience, but on what he has heard from the authorities. That is the way of receiving real knowledge. One cannot reach the real point of factual knowledge without being helped by the right person who is already established in that knowledge. There is a system in the Varnashram institution by which one has to undergo the process of ablution before death for his sinful activities. One who is always engaged in sinful activities must utilize the process of ablution called the prayachita. Without doing so, one surely will be transferred to hellish planets to undergo miserable lives as the result of sinful activities. Text 44. Aho bata mahat papam kartum via vasita vayam yad raja sukha lobena hantum svajanam udyata. Aha, alas, bata, how strange it is, mahat, great, papam, sins, 
Khartoum to perform. Via Vasita, decided. Vayam, we. Yat, so that. Raja, kingdom. Sukha Lobena, driven by greed for royal happiness. Hantum, to kill. Svajanam, kinsman. Udyata, trying for. Translation. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts, driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. Purport. Driven by selfish motives, one may be inclined to such sinful acts as the killing of one's own brother, father, or mother. There are many such instances in the history of the world. But Arjuna, being a saintly devotee of the Lord, is always conscious of moral principles, and therefore takes care to avoid such activities. Text 45 Yadi mam apratikaram ashastram Shastra Panaya Dartarastra Rane Hanyus Tanme Shemataram Bavet Yadi, even if Mam, unto me Apratikaram, without being resistant Ashastram, without being fully equipped Shastra Panaya, those with weapons in hand Dartarastra, the sons of Dhritarastra Rane, in the battlefield, Han Yu, may kill, Tat, that, may, mine, Shemataram, better, Bavet, become. Translation I would consider it better for the sons of Dhritarashtra to kill me unarmed and unresisting, rather than fight with them. Purport It is the custom, according to Chatriya fighting principles, that an unarmed and unwilling foe should not be attacked. Arjuna, however, in such an enigmatic position, decided he would not fight if he were attacked by the enemy. He did not consider how much the other party was bent upon fighting. All these symptoms are due to soft-heartedness, resulting from his being a great devotee of the Lord. Text 46 Sanjaya Uvacha Evam Ukt Varjuna Sankye Rato Pashta Upavishat Vishrijat Sa Sharam Chapam Shoka Samvigna Manasa Sanjaya Sanjaya Uvacha said Evam thus Uktva saying Arjuna Arjuna Sankye in the battlefield Rata, chariot, Upashta, situated on, Upavishat, sat down again, Vishrija, keeping aside, Sasharam, along with arrows, Chapam, the bow, Shoka, lamentation, Samvigna, distressed, Manasa, within the mind. Translation Sanjaya said, Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows, and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. PURPORT While observing the situation of his enemy, Arjuna stood up on the chariot, but he was so afflicted with lamentation that he sat down again, setting aside his bow and arrows. Such a kind and soft-hearted person, in the devotional service of the Lord, is fit to receive self-knowledge. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad-Gita in the matter of observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra.